Welcome back. In the last video, we covered uh, the analysis of categorical variables. In this video, we'll continue our study of univariate analysis and we're going to learn how to do numeric, how to analyze numerical variables, how to deal with numerical variables. Before we begin, let's remind ourselves of the contents of the tutorial. So, we, we are doing now univariate analysis we've covered categorical variables with the counts and percentage and the pie chart and the bar charts and this time we're going to cover numerical variables and how or what we can use to uh, analyze them now numerical variables as the name suggests a numerical or continuous variable or an attribute as we mentioned before it can have different names is one that may take take it may take on any value within a finite or infinite interval so we're talking about numbers here it can be a height a weight temperature etc so we're talking about values which have real numbers or numbers in general if you remember the iris data sets uh, let me just go up to the column name so we have separate length separate width da 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 and class so the class now these are categories we mentioned before we have three categories but if you notice the values of these columns the values of these attributes or characteristics or features or descriptors they are numbers so these are real values this is a good example of uh, numerical variables and for numerical variables now we actually have two types we can have an interval or a ratio numerical variable an interval variable an interval variable has values whose differences are interpretable but it does not have a true zero uh, so for example temperatures yes these we speak about intervals data on an interval scale can be added and subtracted but cannot be meaningfully multiplied or divided uh, so what that means is we when we measure temperatures we don't really care about for example um, you know doubling a temperature or multiplying it by two or three or four yes we usually um, maybe we're usually concerned about the difference in temperatures between yesterday and today or between you know average the average average temperature between January last year and January this year or anything like that but what we're not concerned about multiplying or dividing unless of course if we maybe try to convert temperature from one format to another or from one uh, 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 grade to another from centigrade to Fahrenheit or the opposite in contrast a ratio variable has values with a true zero and can be added, subtracted, multiplied, or divided, like for example the weight, uh, which usually takes real values. Now, in order to analyze numerical variables, we have several statistical techniques. So we need to do some statistics here. And we can we can count number of variables and visualize that via a histogram. We'll come to uh, we'll learn what a histogram is. We can find the minimum value, the maximum value, the names are self-explanatory. We can compute the mean, and we can, by the way, visualize these using a box plot. We'll come to that. Now, computing the mean is the sum of values divided by the count. So we sum all the values and then divide by the count, yes? Notice here, N, capital N, is uh, the count number of values, whereas X is a value of each one. So it's a, it represents each value. We can find the median, which is the middle value after sorting the values. So we sort them and then find the median, the middle value. We can find the mode, which is the most frequent value, the value that repeats the most in our data. We can find a quantile, which is uh, basically, basically a set of cut points that divide a set of data into groups um, containing equal numbers of values it can be a quartile splitting data into four quarters or qu or, or, qu or a quintile splitting the data into five uh, slices 20% each so at 20% 40% 60% 80% and 100% or percentile splitting at 10% each so 10% 20% 30% and so on and so forth we can find the range which is basically the minimum minus I'm sorry the maximum minus the minimum the difference between maximum and minimum we can find the variance by the way, we can uh, visualize box, uh, uh, quantile and range using a box plot. We can find the variance, which 
we can visualize using, using a histogram and the variance is a measure of data dispersion and the equation is like that I hope you can see it. I hope by the way you're familiar with these very basic statistics I'm just trying to explain them quickly I hope you can do your own calculations if you have a simple uh, set of data can you, we can compute standard deviation which is the square root of the variance again visualize it using a histogram we can compute coefficient of deviation skewness and kurtosis uh, the coefficient of deviation is a measure of data dispersion divided by the mean skewness is a measure of uh, symmetry or asymmetry in the distribution of the data and the kurtosis is just a measure of whether the data are peaked or flat relative to a normal distribution all these equations are very simple to actually do yes it's quite simple to compute all these values as long as we have numerical data now we'd like to have an example of a box plot an example bl box plot and, exa and another example of a histogram to see what they look like and how we can interpret them um, so a box plot for for example if you remember the data sets for the sepal length this is a box plot representing the values from this column here all the values from this column all the way around remember we have 100, 150 instances now here as you can see we have 150 total values we have 35 distinct values so we just try basically to find distinct values where values which are repeated uh, and if you notice now we have the minimum value is 4.3 maximum value value 7.9 if you remember the table from the previous slide minimum maximum mean median and so on and so forth all of them we can see them here not all of them really because some others we can actually view them on the histogram but the ones that we mentioned we can see on the box plot we box plot we can see them here we can see the mean we can see the median which is middle value after ordering and these are the percentiles 25% 50%, 75% and the maximum or 100%. So the 100% is 7.9, 75% is 6.40, uh, 6 50% um, is I think 5.8, 25% is 5.10. And moving on to the next one which is the histogram the histogram basically is a very useful visualization technique used in many areas for example even in image analysis and image processing what it does is it actually shows us the count of each different value in a set of data remember the count of each different value if you remember here when I said 35 distinct values we have 35 distinct values but what we try to do is we try to count how many of these values actually uh, how many how many times it occurs or how many times it actually repeats histogram does that for us it just builds a frequency distribution how many uh, each different value of, of the set of data it actually repeats or how many times it occurs it looks like a bar chart so here for example you can build uh, a histogram for the sepal length from the iris data set and here we have the count on the left and or on the y-axis is the count on the x-axis is the sepal length so for example for sepal length of four centimeters we have about four or five for four four point five it's slightly less than twenty four five it's thirty for five point five it's slightly above than thirty and so on and so forth I hope the idea makes sense it's quite simple but really really useful now going back to that table of for these values um, you can use Microsoft Excel or you can use OpenOffice or LibreOffice I use LibreOffice um, it has a, 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 a tool called Calc very LibreOffice Calc equivalent to Microsoft Excel and we can compute these automatically using that tool now this is a table of the values computed for the sepal length the count minimum maximum mean median mode uh, quartile one range um, variance standard standard deviation coefficient of variance skewness and kurtosis all of these can be computed automatically using formulas from Microsoft Excel or from OpenOffice or LibreOffice uh, if you have not tried them before then please do they are quite nice and they are free of charge now I'm going to stop here in the next video I'll be covering 
how we can convert from categorical to numerical variables. Thanks very much, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.